We've had many questions about what our potting mix is here at Logies, and we use what is called a soilless or peat light mix. There are many mixes on the market for potted plants and container plants, and many of them contain a vast array of different nutrients like earthworm castings, compost from seashells. Our potting mix that we use is a very simple substrate of peat moss and perlite. And this has been going on for decades, this particular direction of container horticulture. It has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. The advantage is that you've got a substrate of peat, which is very high water absorption and also fairly good aeration. To that, we add something to open it up even more, and that is perlite. And that's a very simple mix, two ingredients. Perlite is an interesting amendment to our soils in that it's volcanic and it's processed, so it turns white and it's not black. But it is pretty sustainable and there's probably a lot of volcanic material on the earth and horticulture will never use it all up or even made a dent into it. So, and it's very good in terms of its lightness. The aggregate peat moss is harvested from bogs. It originally was sphagnum moss, which is really a great potting mix also for acid loving plants, orchids and things. And it has degraded over time. They build up in these very, very deep bogs where the sphagnum's on the top producing and the older stuff is turning into peat moss as we go down into the bog. It's mostly harvested out of eastern Canada. It is dug, processed, and then shipped. And you can actually buy straight peat moss. The consumer grade is usually the oldest. The horticultural commercial grade is usually a more heavier fiber, which is in many ways better for horticulture, but not necessary. And this peat moss, although not sustainable in that we're digging out more than can be replaced in these bogs, there's much concern about that, but it's probably less so than one really imagined. Sometimes vermiculite will be added. That used to be the trend going back maybe two or three decades ago or even farther back. They don't add that anymore. The reason for that vermiculite was to kind of hold the nutrients, had very good cationic exchange, which is the ability for some type of substrate to hold onto nutrients. It's really not that important in horticulture right now as we do so much uh, constant feeding into that soil mix. Think of it as hydroponics when you're using this mix as opposed to in the old days when we used loam and those soils were much heavier but they had more retention of everything including nutrients in water but also including the exclusion of air. So very important to growing plants is we need an environment that holds the water but has very good drainage and has plenty of air or porosity to it. And we also need nutrients. And so one of the things that these peat light mixes need to have adjusted is their pH. And peat moss is a fairly sour, acidic, and its pH often is in four or five, something like that, can even get down to four. And so we need to adjust that up. So the majority of the plants that we grow, really, if we had our way about it, we'd create this mix that was between 5.5 five, five, and 5.8 five, in a pH. This is for tropical plants and even temperate plants that grow in most of our soil environments. There are plants that actually need it even more acidic. Examples would be the gardenia. Another one is our miracle fruit, Sincepalum. We have some ericaceae. Those are uh, plants in the blueberry family that really like that acidic soil. And without it, they get an imba imbalance. How do we change this 4.5 mix? We add limestone to it. And that brings the pH up, makes it sweeter. It's important when you're using limestone for potting mixes to make sure you get dolomitic. That gives you calcium and magnesium, two major plant nutrients that often are overlooked. The mix that we use is perfect for most everything that we grow, except for those acid-loving ones. 
And on rare occasion, this is only like 1% or even less of the plants we grow, you need to bring it up above seven into the alkali range. And Portlandia, Grandiflora, and the other Portlandias that are grown um, are examples of that. Those are plants that evolved on limestone beds. So many times when you're using potting mixes, you'll see iron chlorosis appear. And that is usually a pH issue. Not always, but it's usually a pH issue. And that would be the growing tips become chlorotic, mean intervenal whiteness in them. And it usually means that the pH of the soil is such that they can't absorb the plant nutrients they need. These mixes do not have fertilizer in them, the vast majority that are made today. And so we need to add that to our potting mix. And we don't do that as a addition to the mix. We do that through our fertilizer program. And what we're using in terms of plant nutrients is a balanced fertilizer. Most of our feeds contain some calcium and magnesium. As I mentioned, that's kind of the overlooked nutrients in growing. And they have the trace minerals or the minor nutrients that are needed for plant growth. And so when you're using a fertilizer, make sure you've got the three macros plus the calcium and magnesium and the miners. And then you can feed into this and create a very balanced feed that the plants can use. The bad part about if there is one, and there are some, about using these soilless mixes is they can get imbalanced very quickly, particularly over the long haul. I mean, we grow plants here sometimes for decades in the same container without ever changing the soil and feeding them constantly or regularly with fertilizers that adjust the nutrient needs and the pH of the soil. Potting mixes are very varied. This is what we use here at Logies. If you use other mixes that you do very well with, or you have questions about the mixes you use, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe.